All right, so this lecture is on Chapter 2, the Visual Studio IDE. So this is a really introductory lecture now where we're just going to go into Visual Studio and learn how it all works. So you might have in some of the other classes already used Visual Studio, probably for something like C++ or C. And so Visual Studio should be familiar to you, but we're going to go ahead and figure out how to use it with C Sharp. So when you first run the application, this is your startup screen that you're going to see. On the left here, you can do a few things like start new projects or open projects or some of your recent projects here. Up along the top, we're going to kind of just go through some of these menu items. So pretty standard, you know, you can do file, new project. We'll be talking about websites in a later lecture with using ASP.NET and then some other things that we don't need to worry about in this class. If you ever need to open another project or solution, we can do file open in here. Um, saving things, you know, pretty standard. In the edit menu, this will be a little more helpful once we actually start writing some code. This view menu is really important because I always forget these keyboard shortcuts, but it's kind of nice that they give them to you here so you don't have to memorize them. You, know, you always forget. So for instance, if you want to open the Solution Explorer, you can hold down Control and then Alt and then press L and that'll pop that open. So the Solution Explorer is where we'll actually see all of our code files and project files. Team Explorer, we're not going to be worrying about this, deals with Team Foundation Server, um, which is like source safe if you ever use that or some other sort of source control material. Server Explorer deals with talking to other servers or other network devices. We're not going to be worrying about connecting to a SQL Server database. As we go here through here, we're going to see some other type windows like error lists when you're compiling your code. Output window just gives you some general output when you're compiling or other different messages. Back to the start page that we're seeing right now. Toolbox, this will be very helpful menu where you can drag and drop buttons and labels, things of that nature. There's also this little one here called Other Windows. So within here, you can see we've got lots and lots of different windows. The vast majority of these, you know, we're never even going to use. So you won't even have to worry about any of these. But it is kind of fun to kind of go through and just click on some of these and see what they do. We've also got toolbars. So you can sort of make Visual Studio however you want it to look. It's kind of like customizing Microsoft Word or Excel. I mean, there's a million things you can do with the menus and different things like that on how you want it to look. Um, property windows. So this is if you want to be able to, you know, click on a button and be able to set its text property or the background color, things of that nature. So that's the properties window. We've also got our debug window. So within that we can have different windows that we can diagnose things, uh, performance profiler, team, again this is getting dealing with team foundation server which we're not going to use in this class. Up here for some tools, you can see that you can actually do some Android or iOS development within Visual Studio. I'm not sure how many people actually do that for actual applications that they try to make money off of, but nonetheless you can do it. Uh, we've got things like connecting to a SQL Server database, and then we've got some import and export settings. One of the things that I think is really helpful is this extensions and updates and so when you click that it's going to pop up this little window here and it'll actually go out to the internet and there's all these add-ons that Microsoft or other people have developed for Visual Studio these little extensions and so one of the things you can do is you can see first you can see these are the ones that I already currently have installed and the one that I always install is the spell checker for Visual Studio and what's really nice about that one is that as you're typing your comments, it's kind of like Microsoft Word, how it gives you a little squiggly for if you have a misspelled word, and so I always install that particular add-on. You can also go online here, and you can see that you can search. You know, if I, again, I can do something like spell, checker, something of that nature, and then when it goes out there, it's going to go out to the internet, search, and you can see there's various spell checkers for Visual Studio, and then you just download it and install it, and it just adds on. There's other ones, all kinds on here that help you, you know, format your code or refactor your code, things of that nature. So I'd really think it's kind of a good idea to go through these extension and updates and just see if there's any that you would like to think that are helpful based on tasks that you're doing a lot. So that's our tools menu. Architecture, we're really not going to be doing anything with UML or layers. Um, there's a lot of new tools lately in Visual Studio with testing. So you'll notice that you can actually write your own unit tests and analyze your code and do all kinds of various things. 
and there's actually a test visual studio aimed at just testers themselves and what they can do is they can just write all kinds of various tests to test someone else's code you can see we can also analyze your code do a performance profiler which I do all the time to see you know how's the memory working with my application or how's the CPU performance things like that it's kinda nice where you know I'll write my program now run this performance profiler and take a look and see which methods are getting called a whole bunch and also see which methods are taking up the most CPU time and then I can just focus on just you know those handful of methods that are you know, taking up 90 percent of the CPU at certain times and then I can work it you know making optimizing those particular methods so now let's go ahead and let's start some new projects so again we could do file new project from our menu up here or you could do new project right here this is going to pop up a list of all the different options we have for creating new projects so let me go ahead and kind of close this down a little bit so you can see depending on what kind of templates you have installed when you first installed Visual Studio so in this class we're going to be using Visual C Sharp but as we talked about in the introductory lecture you can also use Visual Basic or Visual C++ in, as a .NET language or Visual C Sharp. You can also connect to SQL Server and set up you know, databases with that. You actually use Visual Studio to create all your tables and columns and rows, things of that nature with SQL Server and then some other various tools. So in this class we're going to be using C Sharp to program in. So when we open up this particular template you can see we can create Windows programs web programs like we talked about with ASP.NET we can connect to the cloud Android iOS Silverlight or we can write test applications for this class we're always going to be doing Windows applications so within the Windows applications we'll talk about universal Windows apps later on one of the last lectures or classic desktop apps but when you click on Windows here's kind of the list of the different types of applications we can create the two that we're going to be creating in this class are Windows Forms applications and WPF applications, which stands for Windows Presentation Foundations. So Windows Forms is the legacy ways of creating Windows applications, and there's they're not being support. They're not there's no team anymore at Microsoft that creates and updates Windows Forms. However, there's so much legacy code out there that you still need to know how to write Windows Forms applications. WPF applications are the future and this is where all the new controls and add-ons and bug fixes are being done. If we, we'll do one console application in this class and that's it but if you need to write a console application this is how you do it here. You can also create class libraries so if you want to create a DLL for instance you would do this so you create the DLL and you could distribute that code over the internet or to other developers on your team. So for right now we're just going to start off with a Windows Forms application and down here we can name it you know maybe my first app here's the location that it's going to be saved it generally defaults to your Visual Studio 2015 projects folder I tend to just leave it there now we we'll talk about the diff what the solution name is versus the project name in just one second and generally you want to create the directory for the solution go ahead and click OK and so now we're going to go ahead and start creating our project and so what we can do now is after this pops up, we've got our main window that initially gets created here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this property windows down just to show you from a blank canvas here how you would get all your windows open and how this designer works. And so what I usually do is you can come up here to view and then you can find the windows that are helpful to you. So for instance, Solution Explorer, we're going to want open. I'm also going to go to view and then toolbox and get that open so we can figure out you know how we can drag and drop all of our buttons and labels and then the last one that we're going to want to work with is the properties window so under view properties and then again remember you always got these shortcut keys so you don't you can memorize those and you don't have to worry about having to come into the menu here so this is kind of how Visual Studio is set up now what's really nice about Visual Studio um, each subsequent version, so what I mean by that is, you know, there was Visual Studio 2015, which we're using, there was 2012, 2008, 2002, and so depending on which version you're using, the more features are going to be into this IDE. 
And what's nice about this version is that you'll notice that if I can actually click here on my toolbox and I start dragging it, you can see there's all different kinds of places that I can actually dock. Or I can actually leave it just free floating if I want to. And so one of the things that I'll do, like for instance right now, I, on my, I have multiple monitors at home that I'm creating this lecture on. And so what I would generally do when I'm programming is I'll actually drag this particular window on off to a separate monitor completely off to the side. And I would do the exact same thing for my properties and my solution explorer and that way I'd have the most available real estate on my main screen to do my user interface and my code which is really nice. It's a little more difficult when you're just programming on a laptop versus a nice desktop at home where you have multiple monitors. I highly, highly recommend for all your programming courses in just the future or even when you're at work, you need multiple monitors. I can't tell you how much your productivity will go up going from a single to dual monitors. And in my work, I actually have three 24-inch monitors. And it's really nice to be able to have you know, Visual Studio up on, on one monitor. You know, I can have a Microsoft Word document or requirements to open you know, Excel spreadsheet on another monitor. And then on a whole other monitor, I can be looking at a database, for instance, or something else to where I don't always just have to switch back and forth and I can just see the data. And it's just kind of nice fluid. And so generally on my if I just have a single one monitor you can see that there's different ways to dock it and you just kinda click on these little different icons and so that will move it back to where it was to begin with so this is a pretty easy configuration to work with from the beginning so here's our toolbox that we can go through and here's our solution explorer and then here's our properties so let's start off with our solution explorer so within Visual Studio when you say okay file new project what that's actually going to create for you is it's going to create a solution that you can see contains one project here called My First App. So what you can think of a solution as is a container for multiple projects. Now in this class we're generally just going to have one solution which is going to have one project inside of it. So you'd have a solution and inside that solution it's going to say assignment number one for instance. If you ever want more than one project, you can see I can lower this down. I can actually right click on my solution and do, you know, add a new project if I wanted to. And so you can have as many projects within a solution. So a solution is sort of like a Windows folder. And then within that Windows folder, you can have as many files as you want. And so that's the solution file, which this will be the SLN. So let's go to my file explorer now. Let me bring this up and let's go to documents. Visual Studio 2015 projects and we can take a look at my first app and so here's this solution file this SLN file and you can see my first app and so this is what you would click if you want to open up your solution as you can just double click this SLN file also when turning in assignments or asking a question what you want to do is on this folder right here you want to right click on it and then, for instance, I want to add it to archive. I have this program called WinRAR, and I actually just go ahead and I just zip it up. And so this, at this level here, is where you want to zip all your files and email them in for your assignments or when you have questions, because that's going to contain all of your code that I need to either diagnose the problem or to turn in your assignment. So let's jump back here. So here's now our project file. So remember, we can have multiple projects within our solution. So now within this solution, so this is the top level, here is the project now. If I go within to the project, you can see there's actually a project file. You could also double click this. This would open up Visual C, or open up the Visual Studio, and it would open up this project within Visual Studio. And you can see here's all the code files associated with this particular project. So let's kind of go through these. So first, here's the properties associated with your project. Uh, we're not really going to be dealing with too many of these properties throughout the class, but you can deal things with like your assembly info and some other settings, but nothing we need to worry about right now. Here's our references. So we're going to this is we're going to talk a lot about references throughout this class and the .NET framework, but within lecture one we talked about all these classes that Microsoft already wrote for you like the button class or the file class and all this code that you're paying for ahead of time well the this these are the DLLs that represents that points to that code 
So this is where Microsoft has written what a button is, and now you're just adding it, you're referencing it into your project. And you can see if I actually click on one of these, let's just expand this to the left, you can actually see it tells you the reference of where that, or the location of where that DLL is on your file system. So within your project, it's just saying, hey, I'm referencing these DLLs. And if you ever want to add a new reference, like let's say you download a graphics control from the internet so you can gra do some graphing, you can just do right click, add a reference, and we'll do this in a later lecture, and you can add a reference to another DLL, which is that compiled code that someone else has written for you. So app config, we're not really going to be worrying about. So now form1.cs is our file over here. So let me go ahead and just close this tab down. And now if I double click this, you can see it pops open my window here. If I drop this down, we'll talk about the designer file in just a minute. But if I right click on this, I can actually say view code. And so that'll actually take me to the code behind this form. Now I've got this tab, so you, what you can also do, you can actually drag these tabs, and so you can then put them in the order that you want. And you can see you can always close down these tabs, or just again, just double click them. I can also right click over here, and you can see I can bring up my properties window from there, or I can also do view code again. So let's go ahead and go back to my designer. And let's go ahead now, and let's just start creating an application. So you can see if you want to see all the controls, you can drop down here. If you just want the common controls, we can do that. There's also some other helpful, like for instance, containers, which if you want to create a group box, a panel, tab control, we've got some data which deals with databases, menus, components. So what components are, these are all things you can drag and drop onto your IDE, but they don't have any user interface. So for instance, a timer, if I were to drag and drop this, you can see it actually populates down here, and this is a timer. So you can make it tick you know, at interval of every one second, this is in milliseconds, so this would make it go off every second, and then maybe you you know, update the date time on the form so you can have like some sort of counter or something to that. But components just mean there's no actual visual user interface to it. And you can also create all of these behind the scenes in code. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on this and click delete. And we'll go through these more late in later lectures. And same thing with we've got printing and dialog boxes, things of that nature. But let's just kind of start off with some common controls. So these are the controls that we're going to be using the vast majority of the time. That's why it's in the common controls folder. So for the first few applications or for programs that you're even going to have to write for your assignments, the main things you're even going to need to use are the button. So I can just drag and drop a button over here. You're also going to need to know how to use a label. So we can drag and drop that over here. And you can see as I'm moving this over here, it actually kind of gives you this little alignment tools. And so that's kind of nice. So as you, as you do that, it's kind of nice to be able to just align these really easily. So a button, a label, and... Uh, let's see a text box and the rich text box are going to be the main controls that you're even going to be using for like the first three or three assignment four assignments and these are really it we're going to create all of these assignments with and then about halfway through the class I'm actually we're going to have two lectures where I just go through every single control within here and actually tell you about how to use them the main properties you're going to have to use and how do you create applications with those but all we're going to need for these first applications is these controls. So let's take a look at the button control. So if I just click on it, you'll notice over here in my properties window, it's going to give me a list of all the different properties that I can create. Now what it's done is it's actually grouped the properties together. And you can see here's it's called categorized. The next one over is alphabetical. This generally, for whatever reason, I like it alphabetical. It's just easier for me to find where different properties are. So I always tend to have them in alphabetical order. So here's the name. So remember, you always want to, every time you drag and drop a control on here, you always, first thing you always want to do is name the control. So we're going to call this CMD for command button. And we'll call this my button, something like that, or CMD submit, whatever it is. And so maybe another thing is, is we want to change the text property and when you highlight text you just you can see it actually gives you some little information down here on what this property sets and so we can say you know my button or we could change it to you know submit and then over here you can see it actually changed to submit and so there's going to be all these different properties that you can set 
on a button. Now what you always want to remember is that anything you do visually here in the IDE, you can also do behind the scenes here in the code. So everything in .NET is an object. So for instance, a button is an object. So when I drag and drop this button onto my IDE, what this is actually doing is it's actually creating that button for me. It's writing that code for me behind the scenes. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. So it's just writing C-sharp code for you and then visually presenting it to you here. And so when I set these properties, it's just writing C-sharp code behind the scenes for you to set the text property. So it's actually saying, you know, command my button dot text equals submit. And it just writes that code for you actually in this designer file right here. So let's come back to our button and let's take a look at some other properties. So we can see, let's, how about the back color? So we click on back color, click this little drop down, and there's lots of different colors here. We can see we can do custom colors, web colors. Let's say we want a nice red button. Let's make this a little bit larger so we can see it. So that's our background color. You know, we can scroll down if we want to enable the button or disable the button. We can do that here. So if it's false, when I run my application, the user won't be able to click on the button anymore. We scroll down, we can change the font size of it. So maybe it, we need to make this a little bit more readable. So we can make this say 14. So we can see how we enlarged the text there. We, here's the foreground color. We can actually set images. Kind of go down. You can see the text. We can do the text alignment. And so what you'll notice is that there's lots of different properties for a button. Now, there's just going to be too many controls and too many properties for me to go over. It would be a complete waste of your time and an extremely boring lecture if I just went over every single one of these. So what I tend to do is I'm just going to kind of mention the ones that are the most useful, the ones you're going to use, you know, 99% of the time. So for instance, on a button, the ones you're going to use, you know, 99.9% of the time is just setting the text property of your button and then maybe the background color. So those are the ones I'm going to focus my time on. So what you're going to need to do, and again, this is in a pro any programming language, this it's just the time-consuming part where you just have to drag and drop these controls onto the form and just start going through the properties and changing them. I mean, that's just how you're going to learn. It just takes time and experience. There's just no other way around it. So that's what I recommend you do. Start creating some application like this and just start dragging, dropping labels and buttons and you know month calendar controls and just start playing with them and changing the properties over here. But again, the main ones you're going to need to know for right now is the button, label, text box, and the rich text box. So the next thing we want to learn about is if we want to save our application. So I just did all of this work. I can, you know, do save all or I can save just the file I'm on and so here's the save button. You notice there's all kinds of little tools along here that we can use so for instance you know here's our undo and redo but if I were to highlight say a couple of controls you'll notice that I've got some alignment tools now so you can see I can align the tops, align middles, etc, etc all the way through here make things the same size so it's just kinda nice to be able to align things all at once. So when we come back to our button there's also this little lightning bolt here which brings up our events. So GUIs are what are called event based. So if I click this little lightning bolt here, this shows me all the actions I can take, the events that this button can handle. So the main thing you ever want to do with a button is click it. So what this is saying here is if, hey, what's going to happen when the user clicks this button? or what's going to happen when the user you know, has a mouse down or mouse hover or mouse over things like that so mouse enter would occur when the mouse enters the button like that that event would actually get fired off but for a button the main event we're going to worry about is the click event so what I can do is I can come over here and I can either type in a name or I can just double click right here or I can even just double click my button. So let's do this a few different ways. So let's just double click our button and it actually pops back now to our code and it creates this method for us. So don't worry about the syntax, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next lecture. But you'll notice here is now the method that's going to run when the user clicks that button. 
So this method is called CMD my button underscore click. And if I come back to my designer, you can see it actually put that method name in here. Or another way I could have done that is I could have typed my own method name in here and pressed enter and then it would just name it that. And so now I've created this button. When I click the button, this is the code that's actually going to execute when that button gets clicked. So let's, what we'll do is we'll move this label over to here. Now let's take a look at some of the label properties. So I go back to my properties instead of the events. And we can see here's our label. Now a lot of times with our labels, when you think about it, you know, we can either label it like say, you know, first name, last name. So we have, you know, a text box like this. And we want to create a label for it to tell the user what to input. So we can do something like, you know, first name, and again, we can do this, and if we want to, you can see we can, oh, we want to align the centers. Oh, that's not really what we want to do, so I can press Control Z, and that undoes it. Let's see, we can align our lefts, line the rights, line tops, line middles. Okay, that looks much better now. But you know what? We want to make this label a little bit larger, so we can come in here. Oh, there's my fonts. Let's make this, say, 14. Okay, so now we need to realign things so I can do this. I can actually now press my arrow keys and so you can see it gives me a little bit finer granularity where I can actually move this around. So I'm just doing my arrow keys on my keyboard. And so what we want to happen now, again, just to kind of show some code is that when I click the submit button, let's go ahead and let's just put a value, just a little message into our text box right here. So I've got this label and now let's go to our text box call this txt info for instance and so that's the name of my text box now when I click the submit button it comes back to my code so now I can start typing txt and you can actually see IntelliSense comes up with Visual Studio oh here's txt info I can press tab or I can actually just click here if I want and it just kind of fills it in for me so now I've referenced that text box I press dot and then I want to access the text property and what you'll notice is that it sort of truncates that list down to all things that have text within it. And if I were just to do this, you can see now here's the list of all the properties that I can set with a text box. And so what you'll notice is, is like name, for instance. Now that we saw this on our Visual Studio IDE in our properties window over here. So everything that we can set in our properties window, we can set in code. So for instance, text. And let's just say, well, let's set that equal to hello and so when I run my program now when I click my button it's gonna put hello into my text box right here so now again when I highlight my text box you can see here's all the properties that I can set visually or that I can set behind the scenes in code so what's nice about this list is maybe you forget the name of the property or how you set it but you can just come in here visually take a look oh it's called read only if I want to make the user not be able to type anything into it so now we want to run and test our application. So up here, we, all we have to do is click the Start button. We click Start, it compiles our code, and now it's going to run it, and it's going to pop up our application. So here's our application that we just created, and you can see here's some text boxes that we can type things into. Now when I click Submit, it's going to run that method, and it's going to put the word Hello into our text box. Let's go ahead and close down our application, and that stops the debugging. And we'll talk about debugging and how you debug an application in a later lecture. So again, here's our rich text box. Now the thing about, nice about rich text box is it actually understands format characters, and we'll talk about that in another lecture. So for instance, it understands tabs and new line characters. So for your assignments, you're going to have to do some sort of formatting to print out some data. That's why you'd want to use a rich text box versus just a text box. So let's take a look at some other controls, something maybe like, let's take, let's open up the all windows, form controls, and so you can see we've got all kinds of things like check boxes, buttons, data, data sets deal with databases, event logs, so you can see there's all kinds of controls that we can use. But let's take a look at say maybe a picture box. So we drag this over here, we open this up, we can see here's the name, and one of the things is, you know, okay, this is my first time in Visual Studio, you know, I don't know how to use this picture box, but again, you just start going through the properties here, and you say to yourself, okay, what I want to do is I want to put, you know, some sort of picture in my image box. So as you start scrolling down through here, sure enough, here's image. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Okay, you know, we'll talk about project resources, but I'm going to import an image in. We can come into here. Okay, maybe what I want to do is let's scroll down. Let's go to pictures. Let's see, do we have... So all we'd have to do now is just kind of come in here and we could take a look at, you know, a picture and then we could add that to our picture box. And then from there, there's other properties that we could set like size mode, for instance, where we can stretch the image or center the image. So go ahead and add an image into your text box here and then you can set the size mode to stretch the image or auto size it or center image. And so that's how we would use our picture box. So the last thing I want to talk about here is just where it's actually writing this C Sharp code for us. So when I was dragging dropping buttons and labels and text boxes on here, what it was actually doing is just writing code for me in this form1.designer.cs file. If I come back over here to my, again it was in my projects, my first app, and then here's all the files that it was creating for me. So here's that form1.cs, so my C Sharp code itself but it's also linked to this other file called form1.designer.cs and so let's take a look at that one so if I just double click that you can see it's actually just a whole bunch of C-sharp code let me zoom in just a little bit so to zoom in and out you hold down the control key and then just scroll your mouse wheel so you can zoom in and you can zoom out and so let's zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little bit better and so now what you're going to notice is that it actually has the same name, class name, as our code over here. So in our code over here, you can see that it was actually called class form1. And this partial keyword is kind of a new keyword in, in the last few versions of Visual Studio. And what it's really saying is, is this is just part of my form1 class where the there's going to be another part to it. This is just partial. So there's going to be another file that it's going to combine. And so you can see within Form 1, we come over here to the designer, and sure enough, this is also part of the Form 1 class. So when it compiles it, it just puts it all together in one big class or one file. So even though this is split up in two different files, it compiles it together. And the reason it does this is just so it can abstract out all, all of the code that it's writing for you so that you don't touch it or you don't accidentally change it. And then it has this file that it can keep manipulating. So let's kind of go ahead and scroll down now. And you can see it's creating all these th different things. And sure enough, here's some code that it wrote for us. So for instance, here is the code to create a button. So you can see it said, hey, create a button and call it command my button. So when I dragged and dropped this button on here, it wrote this line of code for me. And again, don't worry about the syntax. We're going to be dealing with this syntax in the next lecture. But if I open up this little region here, and we'll talk about regions later also, you can see in this initialized component method, what it does is it actually started creating this button. So for instance, button is a class or is a class. But you can't use that class until you actually instantiate it into an object. And that's what this statement here does. So it says, "Hey, I know I've got this button class, but I want to create a new version of it, a new object, and I'm going to put that into command my button." And now once I've created that object, now I can set all of those properties. So you can see all it did when I was setting the name, the size, the text property, for instance, it was just simply writing this code for me. That's all it did. So if we come back to our designer here, and here's our submit button, let's go ahead and change, for instance, the text property. Let's call it submit to, press enter. And you can see it actually updated all these files for me. And I come back over here to my designer file and you can see it changed it to submit to. Now you'd never want to change any code over here in your designer because it's going to be updated you know, by the IDE. So you should never change any code in here. But you can see this is just C-sharp code. So what this is also telling you is again, all of this thing can just be written in code. This is sort of where the black magic is happening in Visual Studio on how it's writing the code for you. Now here, again, do not worry about the syntax on this, but this is how it connects the dots between when I click this button and I run this method. So in this designer file it says, hey, when this button gets clicked, I want you to call this method. And again, we're going to talk a lot about what's really going on in the syntax here, and it's a lot more complicated, but the very top level 
you know view of this is when this button gets clicked call this method and so that's how it connects all that up for you the only other thing we want to talk about is within when we first created our code you notice we have this namespace and then we've got our class and then we've got our constructor and so it's created all this code for us and we're going to talk about what all of this does in another lecture but namespace is just a container for all of our code and that's really the way kind of like a windows folder again it's just one way to contain multiple classes and things like that and we'll, we'll get into this more it's also creating our class for us that we called form one and we're inheriting from the form base class so we're getting this for free so the reason that this has these X buttons the and we can looks like a window and you'll notice when I run it that I can actually you know expand it and things like that And you notice there's a title and things all these things that you don't even think about that I can expand and you know minimize it that make it look like a window is because this form base class that Microsoft has already written for us and that's called inheritance and we'll, we'll have a whole lecture on inheritance this is our constructor of our code and so this is the first thing that gets ran when our code or when this form one class gets instantiated and now what you'll notice is that in this constructor there's this method called initialize component now if I highlight it you can see it actually tells you some information about it now what we can do is we can right click on this method and there's all kinds of options that they give us but one of them is go to definition so if I do go to definition or press F12 notice it actually jumps me to that designer file where all of that code was first getting created that we just looked at for instance here's my button that we looked at so this is where all of those get initialized and actually get created in our code and that's how it was calling all those and creating all those objects and then again here's the method that we wrote so this is our first lecture on Visual Studio and the IDE and what I want you to do is just sort of jump in go through all the menus, download those extensions, play with all the controls, set the properties, and just kind of get familiar with it. So good luck and have fun and ask me any questions you need.